Okay, this is number six from the 2019 Calc AB exam, and it's kind of a weird problem. So let's uh, let's see what we gotta do. So we're told that the functions f, g, and h are twice differentiable with um, g of two equals h of two equals four. Um, we know that the line y equals four plus two thirds the quantity x minus two is tangent to both uh, the graph of g at x equals two and the graph of h at x equals two. Um, so there's Kind of a bunch going on there. So the first question is to find h prime of two, which uh, is kind of weird. So uh, h prime of two is definitely two thirds because uh, that line is tangent to the graph of h at two. So the line and the curve have the same slope. So uh, it's two thirds. Uh, it made me uncomfortable to just write that. So I also added, uh, which is the slope of the tangent line to h at x equals two, because that just felt better. Um, okay, so let's move on to part B. So part B defines a new function, a of x, which is 3x cubed times h of x, and then asks for an expression for a prime, and then also to find a prime of 2. So let's first find an expression for a prime. So it's a product, so we use the product rule. So it's first, 3x cubed, derivative of the second is h prime of x, plus second, which is h of x, derivative of the first, which is 9x squared. Okay, so that's an expression for a prime. And now we want to find a prime of 2. So we substitute 2, so you get 3 times 8 is 24, h prime of 2, plus uh, 9 times 4 is 36, and then h of 2. Now we need to know what um, h of 2 and h prime of 2 are. So we solved for h prime of 2 in the previous part, and we got 2 thirds. And then also we're just told that h of 2 is 4. So I'm going to substitute those values. So I have this. And then uh, I think you could actually stop there, but I'm going to keep going. So I get 16 plus 144. So I get a prime of 2 is 160. All right, let's take a look at part C, which is where this question starts getting a little weird. Um, so let's see. So uh, we know this. And then part C says the function h satisfies h of x is x squared minus 4 over 1 minus f of x cubed, where x is not equal to 2. Um, it's known that the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule. Um, we also know that h is twice differentiable, which means that um, h is continuous. Um, we want to use the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x to find f of 2 and f prime of 2. Um, and we want to show the work or the logic or something that leads to our answer. So uh, I'm going to start off with, um, since the limit of the numerator of that thing is definitely zero as x approaches two, um, and we know that L'Hopital's rule applies because the problem just tells us that, uh, that means that the limit of the denominator must also be zero, which is actually a pretty useful point. So we have this. Um, so that tells us that knowing this um, means that we also know that just kind of distributing the limit, uh, we get one minus the limit as x approaches two of f of x cubed is equal to zero, which means that uh, just the limit as x approaches two of f of x is equal to one. So I added one um, and took the cube root. And we know that from the kind of stem of the problem that f of x is differentiable, which means f of x is continuous, which means that f of 2 is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, um, which we just found is 1. So we now know that f of 2 is equal to 1. So I think some of that might be redundant, but uh, I think it covers the problem for sure. Uh, so I'm going to start a new slide and find f prime of 2. So we have all of this still. So now I need to find f prime of 2. So I know that uh, h of x is uh, differentiable. It's twice differentiable, so it's differentiable. Um, and therefore, h of x is continuous. So I know that h of 2 is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x um, by the definition of continuity. So they told me that L'Hopital's applies. So I know that the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x is um, the same as the limit as x approaches 2 of, I'm just applying L'Hopital's rule. So derivative of the top is 2x. Derivative of the bottom requires the chain rule. 
So it's going to be uh, the derivative of 1 is 0, and then it's negative 3 f of x squared, and then f prime of x. So that's using L'Hopital's rule. And now I'm going to substitute all the things that I know. So I know that um, I know that h of 2 is equal to 4. So I'm going to have 4 is equal to uh, plugging in 2, I get 2 times 2. f of 2 is 1, which we found on the previous part. And then f prime of 2 is what we're looking for. So now we actually just have an equation. The only thing we don't know here is f prime of 2. So this becomes negative 3 f prime of 2 is 1 which tells me that f prime of two must be negative one third. All right, so I found uh, f of two and I found f prime of two and I tried to show all the work that led to that. So I think that should be good. And now let's see what part D is asking us. So part D says it's known that g of x is less than h of x for all x between one and three. Um, and k of x is a function that's stuck in between g of x and h of x for all x between one and three. And we wanna know if, if k is continuous at x equals two. So like your initial impulse here is to say it, it almost definitely is continuous um, because like how could it not be? But now what we need to do is come up with a justification for that. So I'm gonna start with differentiability implying continuity again. So g and h were told in the original part of the problem are differentiable, therefore they're definitely continuous, which means we can write the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x equals g of 2. And we know those are that's equal to 4. And the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x is equal to h of 2, which is also equal to 4 from the given information. So all I've done is written down kind of given information at this point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start trying to show that the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x is equal to k of 2. So I'm going to start with the limit. So they tell us this weird inequality thing. Um, but that's important because uh, since that inequality is true, the limit as x approaches 2 of that inequality, so of each part of that inequality, is also going to satisfy that inequality. So the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x, less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x. How many times can you say the limit as x approaches 2? Um, okay, so I know from the continuity of g and h, those limits are four on the left and right hand sides. So here I, I have this inequality. And what I'm doing is I'm using the squeeze theorem, but I'm not actually referencing the squeeze theorem. I don't think you need to say the word squeeze theorem to get the points on this, but that's really what we're doing. Um, and anything that's between four and four inclusive must be four. So we've actually shown the limit as x approaches two of k of x is four. Um, okay, so from that triple inequality, uh, that we have there, I guess it's a double inequality, a compound inequality, let's call it, uh, we know that it must be the case that g of 2 is less than or equal to k of 2 is less than or equal to h of 2. Um, and we have already established that g of 2 and h of 2 are both 4. So uh, we have this situation, which means the only value that k of 2 could possibly have is 4. And so what we've done is we've actually shown that the limit equals the value of the function. So let's just finish this off. So since the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x is equal to k of 2, um, we know that k of x by definition is continuous at x equals 2. And I think we proved it. So uh, that's all of problem number six. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.